اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاه والسلام على رسول الله وعلى اله وصحبه ومن والاه وبعد اول بريزز دو تو الله مي الله سبيس اند بليسنجز بي ابون هيز بروفيت محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم وي كونتينيو سوره المائده لاست سيكشن وي ستوبد ات واز الحد السرقه اور ذا بانيشمنت اوف روبري اند ثيفت وي سيد فيو ثينجز ذات ان ريليشن تو ذات As we mentioned in the very beginning of the tafsir cl- course, the class, that we are not going to go too deep in any fiqhi issues, right? But we talk from linguistic perspective, tafsir, hadith, all of that. We don't get to the debates among the scholars unless uh, there is a need. So here, <coughs> there is a difference between armed robbery and regular robbery. Armed robbery comes under al hirabah or threatening the stability of the society. The punishment is more gruesome, more se- severe, uh, killing, you know, execution based. And under that comes rape, uh, drug dealing, uh, armed robbery, threatening the safety of the people, comes under that. Uh, whether it's one person or a group of people, okay? Also, uh, if a group of people share, they will all be punished because each one of them has But if one of them is leading, one of them is scouting, one of them is doing, then the punishment will be different. The person only would be cut is the one that who, who steals. But if they all participated and each one has a share, then all of them will be cut. Regardless of their job, because yani. they all facilitated the thing. Okay? So, uh, also, Uh, we talked about like it's, it has to be the hand, right hand has to be cut. It has to be cut from the uh, wrist, right? Because this is the sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yad can be the wrist, yad can be the elbow, yad can be the shoulder, but uh, here it is. And if he repeats the stealing again, uh, left foot will be done from the ankles. Then after that will be imprisonment. Because you know, how oh, I'm going to keep cutting. <laughs> Some people did like that. At Sayyidina Ali's time, a person kept stealing like this. So he said, I feel embarrassed yani, to not to leave him a uh, leg to walk on and a uh, hand to eat and wash with and stuff like that. So uh, what else? Uh, also, in fiqh, the ulama differed among the one who uh, pickpocket. Who pickpocketing? Uh, they, they said if... Uh, If a person has the money easy to access, then the person will not be cut. But if it is hidden, you yani understand somebody wearing a jacket and the wallet is in the jacket, that means extra effort has to go. But if somebody has a wallet hanging out <laughs> and it's easy to be pickpocketed, again, you participated in your own theft, you know? Like don't put the money on the dashboard in the car. Uh, don't leave your car unlocked. Like if you leave your car unlocked and somebody steals something from the car, yeah, they can be punished, but not hand will not be cut. So we are saying all these things to appreciate the Sharia of Islam. Yeah, it's not like haphazard. Oh, you steal, you cut. It's not like that. Or somebody did, oh, execute. Or somebody did, oh, yeah, stone. This is not the whole idea in Islam, you know. Islam does everything for this not to go to the authority. Right? So if somebody stole something from you and then you found them and you forgive them, you don't have to be cut. Yeah. You did not report, right? Or a person gifted it to them. But once you reach the authority, the punishment here is not because the individual personal uh, act. It is for the society now. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, whenever it goes to authority, authority has no authority now. So once it reaches to the authority, It has to be uh, applied. The rule has to be applied. That's why Rasulullah قال تعافوا الحدود بينكم يعني any had among yourself. Right? Among yourself. Four people saw somebody committing zina. It is not an obligation on them that they have to go testify. People think like that. يعني that if there has to be four people for somebody to accuse someone with adultery. Right? But if there are four people and they saw the act Are they obligated to go to the Hakim? No. If they don't go, they are not sinful or anything. Unless there was a rape, you know, this is another, another issue. Yani they are not going to sit and watch. They have to go and, uh, you know, relief. 
the person. But I'm just saying in general, Islam does not want these things to be applied. That's not the intention. But if it reaches the authority, Islam has to be applied. That the, you know, Islam said it has to be no forgiveness at that moment because now it is public. And it is civil right. And it is government. There is authority. Order has to be established. Law and order has to be established. Otherwise, everybody said, oh, I can get out of it. You know, like I can get out of it. What makes people, when you get pulled over, try to get out of it? I'm asking a question here. Why? Why you do that? Because you know there is a possibility, right? Right? But if you know for 100% 100, 100 sure there is no playing around, once you see those lights, you're getting a ticket. You made a mistake, you're getting a ticket. Then, nobody will try to get out, right? So he comes, registration and things, either warning or ticket. No, no word talking. No, no talk. You want to fight it? Fight it in the court. But end of story. But now I'm going to speak nice, or I'm going to do this, or I'm going to give the excuse. Why? Because the possibility there. There is a possibility there. Go even go to the court. Oh, I want this and I want that, or I want a jury. Why? Because you know they can play around. I am serious. The more the law gives you a chance to get out of things, people are going to get out of more things. <coughs> right? But when it is severe, nobody wants a severe law to be applied. So everybody avoids it. <laughs> so when you make a severe uh, application, I mean severe punishment, then people do not want to come to it because it is so severe. But if there is a chance to talk, and we'll talk about it, a good lawyer, I pay $100 because I don't want my record to, everybody now goes around things. And even they go there knowing they're guilty. I know that I spent, I know I'm guilty. And I know the officer is right, yet I'm going to the court wishing that he doesn't come. Why? Because it will be dismissed if he's not there. Just that, that simple. So that's what I'm trying to say. When the Sharia of Islam makes the severe punishments, it is not about the severity of it or about one person. It's about the stability that it will create in the society. Is there any time that this uh, punishment and other punishment would, would be uh, uh, frozen or hold? Yeah. If it is in the army, for example, like they are in the army, they are going fighting an enemy and the war starts and somebody stole from somebody within my army, Muslim army. I'm not going to cut his hand. He's fighting. <laughs> He's fighting against the enemies. Should I cut his hand? Then... I have a liability now. I have, I'm carrying someone who does, cannot fight. So yeah, can be put in prison or can be like, you know, uh, asked to, to do certain things or like, you know, carry the dead or, you know, but whatever. You cannot apply that at that time. And there are many discussions in Had al I mean, in the section of Hudud in Fiqh comes under, you know, that we have uh, fiqh al mu'amalat in fiqh, fiqh, we have ibadat, worship, like tahara, salah, tayammum, fasting, hajj, all of that, ibadat, yani, worship. And then you have fiqh al mu'amalat, mu'amalat, yani, in transactions. Under mu'amalat, they have financial transactions, you have fam family transactions, financial transactions like selling and buying and and partnership and all of that and what is haram like riba and stuff like this rent and stuff like this halal you know all of that this is under business transactions then you have family family fiqh under that mu'amalat also marriage and divorce and custody and this and that and uh, then you have uh, fiqh al-jinayat jinayat yani, uh, yani the crime criminal law criminal law and the criminal law comes under it, all the crimes that's not supposed to be, I mean, the things that not supposed to transgress, and then how it is transgressed, when you can say it's transgressed, and when, what punishment would be applied, and who applies the punishment, and when it is applied, how it's applied.
that's called criminal law so they come and say uh, uh, relationship between man and woman uh, you know has to be through marriage and all of that right if it is done like this is not marriage it is zina and what if a person commits zina uh, he has to be punished so when would be considered zina right when any 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 physical relationship would be considered zina no so there is a specific thing you know has to happen and then you know uh, the qualification of the two Maybe one of them is Majnoon, one of Majnoon, right? Uh, or a psychological problem, they do not know what they're doing, right? Or someone was put under medication or something like that. So there are, yani the, when you're going to define it as zina, when is this going to be defined? And those people, do, are, are, do they meet, meet the qualification or not? Once this is established, then we call it like that. Now, once it is established, to be punished, there is another thing, right? To be punished now, there has to be tes testimony. And they're like, okay, we have the, all the, the pillars of the crime. It is done. A man and a woman, the consent, this, that, all of these kind of things. And they did. But one person only saw them. So the punishment is not going to be done. Actually, the one person would be punished. Even he's a sheikh. Even he's the most truthful person in town. You see how severe is the thing? That tells you what? That even with this act, Islamic, the society of Muslims do not want these things to come out public. Because if a truthful person comes now, another untruthful person will come because you have something against someone who will say, oh, I saw them doing it. So we have to be punished because you're going to be punished regardless who you are. So be careful, you know. So someone, two people saw it, three people saw it, still doesn't. They come to the imam and they say, we saw this guy, wallahi, wallahi, I swear by Allah al-Azim, wallahi and the Quran and I swear on my life, whatever they swear with, halal, haram, everything. We saw this man and this woman and they did this, 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 this at that time and all, the, all of the above. Where is the fourth? No fourth. Okay, take off your shirts and push each one 80 times. Okay? It's either four people or this is going to happen. And the four people came and after they said one of them changed his uh, thing. All four will be <laughs> So, this is not protecting those who commit adultery. No, it is protecting the honor of the whole community. You have to be extremely sure and extremely ready for this okay so nobody is going to come forward and report someone without being 100 percent there are four people there with testimony has to match they will uh, interview them behind each other all of that and then the had will be done because if that man is married or that woman is married will be stoned to death that's not an easy it's not a joke it's not a joke that's why if someone actually say say Accuse someone, said you're you're son of this. You know the the word that they say it in here. You are the son of, you know, eighty lashes. In Islam. Yeah, if somebody accuse someone with zina, they will take eighty lashes. Go bring three more witness that the the woman did this. Otherwise, you will be eighty lashes. And not only eighty lashes, their testimony will never be accepted in court forever. Allah said in the Surah Al-Nur, you know, the scholars said, what if he repents? Some of them said, yeah, we can accept testimony. Some of them said, no. Their punishment until they die, they cannot testify in court. They cannot sign any certificate of testimony. They cannot certify in a marriage. Khalas. If someone accuses someone, man or woman, huh, with adultery, uh, or accuses his mother or his father or his, with those words that they say in the street, you know, Allahu Akbar. That's how much Islam protects the honor of someone. Nobody can accuse you in your ird, in your honor, you know. Nobody can accuse you even jokingly. Nobody should do that. This is a red line, big red line. <coughs> Cannot come to the honor of someone. You see how, how big is marriage in Islam, how big is honor, you know, for a woman. And if she's not married, 
it's huge. If she's married, it is even bigger. Nobody can talk about her like, oh, she goes with men, what, I don't know what she does. That in itself is bad. You know, doubting and all of that. That's why we say husband and wife, you have to trust each other. Okay? And many husband and wife, they come talk to me for, for counseling. I said, there is nothing, there is no way that you're going to be 100% sure that your spouse is lo loyal to you. There is no way. It's a test of Allah Azza wa Jal. So the only thing is your choice to believe. They can do whatever. If you decide not to believe, you will not believe. Am I clear with this one? Yeah. You are here now. Any of your husband, they know what you're doing? No. But they take your word for it, yes? They, they chose to take your word for it. That you are studying at Sheikh Mamdouh Sahaw's tafsir. They took your word for it. If they choose not to, whatever you do, do they see every week? Do they see you every minute? No. So this, I'm just saying it in a very simple way so we know what trust means. Trust does not mean how much that person is convincing you. No, trust is your choice to trust. Whatever I do, if you choose not to trust me, it's done. It's done. Because you do not see me 24-7 under your eye. I'm moving. I'm, if I take my phone and I go to the other room, that means I'm talking to somebody. If I show you, I show you the statement, you said maybe you have another phone. <laughs> maybe there is a phone in the masjid. Maybe you are doing it in the car. You talk from somebody else's phone. So what should I do? And I was, I'm just telling you, it is your choice. Oh, I'm going with uh, all my uh, sister friends and all that. How do I know that? How do I know that? Maybe they will cover you up. All of them, they are as bad as you. That's false I'm, just, I'm just saying, like, you know, in our deen and human, even human interaction, when you say, I trust you, that's your decision. Not what I do. What I do is between me and Allah, that's another deal, another commitment here, right? And whatever you do, when I'm not there, it is between you and Allah, that's it. Allah said, I'll protect your honor, nobody can accuse you, nobody should doubt you, nobody should spy on you. You see? So what is left is that word trust. But the word trust, everybody think that I have to do certain things for you to trust me. Okay, what do you want me to do? Flowers? Oh, all the flowers in the world for you. <laughs> Chocolate, flowers, who take you out, to everything. What about the time I'm not with you? Right? So that's lots of things like that. So I tell everybody, take it easy. The issue is not that hard. There is no relationship should compromise your relationship with Allah Azza wa None. And I mean none. No human being will benefit you when it comes between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one. So the only thing is, polite, be kind, do your work with Allah Azza wa Jal, okay? And leave it to Allah. Now if there are things which is blatant, and how can I trust someone who is like openly doing things? Always talk, you know, talk about things, be on the clear side. And do not do things that create doubt in others. Because sometimes we do this, sisters, we do these things. We are all humans, right? Men and women sometimes, they want to create the jealousy or the uncomfort, discomfort in the heart of the other person because they are not happy. And it ends up backfiring. It ends up backfiring. So the husband is not paying attention to the wife, or the wife is not paying attention to the husband. They pretend that they are talking to somebody else. Yeah, yeah. they pretend. Well, they come to my office all the time. Oh, I was just teasing her. I said, are you crazy, man? What are you talking about? You know, like, you know, I started talking to all my, uh, my co-worker women and all that, and we have a dinner, we have this and that. So she becomes, uh, I said, <laughs> now she will never trust you for sure. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, or she started like going on Facebook and all that and oh, she started adding men friend in her Facebook and then it creates a problem. It backfires big time. So do not let these things. Your relationship with Allah is ultimate, number one. 
above everything and it is going to protect every other relationship under the sun if your relationship with Allah is so sincere this is the one that you are loyal to Allah Azza wa Jal Wahid Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam if you follow that then you are not going to do anything wrong now if people choose to trust you Alhamdulillah good for them if they choose not to trust you their loss you understand me? it's their loss you do my grandmother used to say walk straight your enemy will be confused what she says is like once you are on the straight path everybody always because they are wrong they assume you're going to do wrong but you keep doing right so they say hmm this is a trick oh he's bluffing oh he's not. but you're not you're just going straight path you're doing the things that pleases Allah and is Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam now many people will like you will dislike you just leave them for Rabbul Alameen all this I'm saying to, to, to show the beauty of the deen of Allah even when punishments come so all these punishments severe but Allah does not want us to get that close right forgive among you some people said oh Shaykh the, this man this woman this boy this girl they did haram together and all of that what should we do I should get them married I am not the Amir al-Mu'mineen here to get them married really yeah nikah ala tool tonight get them married and don't talk about it right especially if family member yeah. like the daughter of someone or sister of someone or uh, like that I said cover it zip it don't talk get them together alhamdulillah right some people come and say the end of the do I need to confess I said don't confess no confession in our deen so these are the, the way Allah protects once these things because if it keeps coming up, keep coming up, keep coming up you know now there is an art of digging behind someone to defame them it's one step further yeah, you know these people are so good he said oh, I'm gonna dig and prove that he has a skeleton or she has a problem you know had a haram for deen this is haram it's haram to go and spy on people and bring the hidden the hidden problems you cannot do that you are not supposed to do that unless as I said there is crimes that's going to be repeated and someone like you know community will suffer from it but if it is on a personal level leave it in the past leave it in the past but if that pattern is and it has to be opened yeah like someone is a is a child molester or somebody is like you know is raping or somebody is like you know deceiving women or doing something repeated even though they are a big person or something like that no this has to come out but in a proper way to you know relieve the community from that deviation but if somebody did some mistake when they were young or they did some wrong or something like that you are not supposed to go dig because if you dig in everybody you're going to find something am i right yeah. in everybody you dig in everybody's life in this time and age you're going to find something then what then what I, I, I wish that there is like a, a way that to make everybody equal if you dig in anybody you're going to be digged into like everybody can dig in everybody then nobody's going to dig in everybody you know like nuclear power Nuke, nuclear nuclear so you have nuclear I have nuclear so we're not going to have a, a nuclear war why because we both have <laughs> so when everybody there is no privacy so nobody's gonna be nobody's gonna care in looking into anybody else like Yawm Al-Qiyamah everybody's naked but nobody looked at anybody because everybody's busy with themselves right so it's just like that but since people have secrets and nobody is watching and nobody is able to access it we should keep it like that don't spy on people don't hack in people's account don't put recorders on somebody's line don't uh, hire a private eye to follow the husband or the wife don't do these things yes where does it stand with regard to children can you look through the things in the room by, by all definitions spying on them to you know, when it comes to children, where the, what's the... If they, if they become over 18, I mean, if, actually if they reach puberty and all, but let's say they become 18, then they are an adult. You cannot spy on them. No, what, no I meant when they minor. Yeah, the minor, okay. They are your responsibility. It would not be considered spying here. Oh. 
Because they don't have their independent life. They're depending on you and everything. <laughs> So okay. It's okay to yeah, it's not, but to not not to them. invade the privacy. Like you have to knock on them before you enter. You have to do these things because maybe they are in a position that they don't want you to see. Like, you know, they are out of the shower or they are dressed improperly or something like that. But as a you know, the the way to avoid most of this is the trust. Again, your choice to trust them. And the, the openness that they can, they, can, they can feel safe coming and talking to you about things. <coughs> it is doable, by the way. <coughs> Trust me, it is doable. Kids will come, even when they do a mistake, they will come and tell you. It is doable. It's not, but, but you have to invest from young age, you know, uh, and teach them that. You yeah, can do a mistake, yes, everything we can talk about. And I tell parents, you know, if it is done, it is done. And you have nothing to do about it. You cannot rewind and undo. So make sure that the things are not done. And how we make sure the things are not done? By talking. Because you know, you are not there, as I said, 24 seven. You give your back like this, they can do whatever you are afraid of. Yeah. You know that they can hack the GPS now system. They can hack it. They can do something that to show you that they're in one place, but they're in another. So don't be smart father or mother and put a device and it's gonna show you the things. No, it will show you the car moving and going and everything. Kids can program anything now. And they have other things now, like they go to school and the school have a closed internet system and they have something that they log into and they can surface everything they can do. While the, mashallah, school system is spending millions on, on the Wi-Fi and all of that. So, yani, as I said, you do not have any option except choice to trust and talk talk about everything and I mean everything you have a policy with your children or your grandchildren or whoever to talk about anything there is nothing off limit to talk about like in our time in our time how what like that we're scared to talk about it and we're scared to even think about it because the whole society is like that somebody's gonna see you somewhere right even you know nobody knows you and you are a completely hundred miles away from your house and you do something and an adult walking said shame on you right that is the society there like that that's when we were young yes when we were young we were afraid to do anything wrong because the whole society think like your dad and your mom wherever you go but now it is the complete reverse you can do whatever you want in front of your dad and mom and they have nothing to do about it because 911 they're abusing me. So the only solution you have is open policy of discussion. And when they come to you with horrible stuff that you would be calm, <laughs> take a deep breath, and I said, mm, and listen. And if you do not have any answer, he said, I'll answer you tonight, inshallah, until you calm down. But never take things aggressive because they're watching you. What is your reaction and all of that? It's better to listen to your children than let them do and then you get face to the result. They talk. Dad, what if I have a boyfriend? What if you, uh, you wake up in the morning and you discover I'm not like straight? The kids, they ask these questions, you know. It's testing your limit, you know. Uh, what if I... I'm interested in another religion. You see, I'm just giving you extreme things. Okay? Uh, I, I, I want to move out. Once I'm like 18, I'm going to move out and live on my own. So th these are the things that we're always scared of, right? But I said, don't be scared. Actually, expect those things to come. Number one, if they don't come, trigger them. You trigger them. I trigger those things all the time. You know, because I would like to hear what they have to say about it. I'm not going to wait because maybe they feel shy and I'll trigger those things. And then you see how ready they are, what it's going to look like. Okay, so, okay, right, fine. Let's say that it, that, that day is today. Let's pretend that you are like that. Then how life is going to look like. What do you expect from me to do? Right? Now you are switching the whole conversation. I know it's scary, I know it is uncomfortable, I know it is horrifying, but 
you have to talk about things and talk about it sometimes the kids they have the thought and for you resisting the thought it becomes a reality okay but if it is a thought keep it as a thought but give a process oh I want to move out and I want to be on my own well great which side of town you're gonna live in I say that which side of town you're gonna live in uh, I don't know we're gonna live with who inshallah uh, one of my friends, uh, your friend have family or no family? Oh, they, have family. Oh, they are must, must be rich to pay the rent and everything. No, we're going to share. I said, okay, how much is it? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> so, okay, the apartments here, there's like 1200 per month, plus the bills and everything. We're talking about sixteen, seventeen hundred dollars a month. You work? Or do you want to go to college? We want to go to college. So who's going to pay for college? Who's going to pay for that? We need a car, of course. Yeah, who's going to pay for the car? We need gas for the car. What's going to be? The toll away. Oh, you make everything hard like this. I said, no, man, I'm just telling you. Because once you move out of that house, that house is cut. Cut off. You are welcome to come and eat whenever you want, but no more. Why? Why? The answer, why? Why should I? Yani, I am, you are here and you are costing me 500. Why should you go out and you cost me 2000? Why, yani? <laughs> like, why should I do that? For your own freedom? For you to enjoy yani, being away from me? What am I doing here to, uh, to transgress you or oppress you? No, what, what am I doing here is an oppression. Tell me, so I can change myself. Then you find the thought is empty. You understand me? It's a thought. You resist it, the thought keeps developing now. They're not seeing all of this. They're seeing one thing only. My dad or my mom wants to control, wants to press. I need to break out. I need to break out. I need to break out. Right, that, you know? But you didn't say, yeah, break out. But it's costly. Then they come to the real reality. You gotta sit. Stable, you know? Okay, you become like that. How the community will look at you? How, how, is it haram or halal? It's haram, okay. How can I approve something which is haram? What do you expect me to do? Like to say, okay, my son or my daughter is doing haram and I am Sheikh Mamdouh, okay with it? Do you expect this from me? Uh, no. <laughs> so what do you expect me to do? Being whoever I am and whoever you are. See, you put the things in realistic talk, serious talk, firm but soft, you know, firm but nice. Think like that. And I want you as parents or as adults to always have the bad things that you are afraid of. What if they happen? What would I do? How can I handle or deal with it? Okay, you'll be ready all the time. Before any interface or anything like that, I said, what would be the worst question that the people will ask me in the interview? Mm. I keep asking myself and making a list, right? Why I should say, Ya Rab, please, no bad question, no bad questions, no bad questions. Okay, what if a bad question comes, then what? So I have to be ready for it. What if this question comes, hmm, how should I approach it? This, 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 this. Okay. If it comes, I'm ready. If it doesn't come, that's why people feel, oh, he has answer for everything. No, I don't have answer for everything. I just have answer for your expected questions. <laughs> I assumed your questions and then I have answers for them. Fa our deen and the sharia is not haphazard like that. It respects everybody, gives everybody honor, it gives everybody space. You have boundaries, nobody can transgress them. If somebody transgresses them, will be punished. Trust is a big deal, but it is your choice. Your relationship with Allah, nothing should bypass it. That is the one that you hold tight to, no matter what. Husband, wife, father, mother, grandfather, grandmother, president, uh, employer, employee, neighbor, friend, all of these things are prone to change at any time. Any time. Okay? Uh, even the Prophet ﷺ, his relationships with everybody around him was changeable. Changeable. Up and down. With his own wives. Leave them, not leave them, mad at them, happy with them, like that. Okay? As if Allah Azza is sending a message to all the close people to him, 
that your heart has to be mine and mine only. So they cannot be attached to any the dunya. They will deal fine with people. And that's why I tell, I tell everybody, marriage and love not necessarily together. They are not synonyms to each other. There is love without marriage and there is marriage without love. And they can both survive. But love without marriage has a certain limits. You cannot transgress haram. And marriage without love, it does not mean it will lead to transgression. You have to give everybody the right. Allah Azza wa says in the Quran, we studied it in Surah Al-Nisa, if you dislike your, your wives, you hate them. Allah said the word hate. Maybe you hate someone and lots of goodness come out. Yeah, it means the marriage can continue, even one of them dislike each other. Yeah. But because we quit our comfort and our you know, feelings to the institution of marriage, there are lots of divorce happening. Because I did not get from the marriage what I want, what I expect. It is not about marriage itself. I am in a marriage now that has to be protected. We don't think like that. We think I am in a marriage that I wanted something, but I'm not getting it. Or I'm not getting it anymore. Khalas, I, I'm out. And that's the problem. But all the relationship that we're su supposed to cherish and hold tight to is the relationship of Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything after that, as long as you are in the right path, don't worry about who stays, who leaves, who hates, who likes. It's not a big deal. It's big, but it's not a huge deal. You know, it's like, it's okay. You can survive without. Allah Azza wa telling Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, verse number 41, Ya ayyuhar Rasulu, la yahzunka. No one of all the prophets and the messengers, Allah called them Ya ayyuhar Rasul, or Ya ayyuhar Nabi. Allah called them by their name. Ya Adam, Ya Nuh, Ya Hud, Ya Salih, Ya Shu'aib, people call. But when Allah talked to Rasulullah, he said, Ya Ayyuhal Nabi, Ya Ayyuhal Rasul. See the honor Allah gave Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Oh Messenger, oh Prophet. Now, I want you to imagine for a, m a moment, you are sending someone to give a letter or give a shipment to someone else. How much you respect to that person? Not much. He is your messenger. Yeah. I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, making resemblance, astaghfirullah. I'm just telling you, a messenger is a messenger, paid or not paid. Yeah. You are telling them to go deliver something. We are not going to call them, oh, messenger, or this. You know, we're going to call them by name. Subhanallah, Allah shows respect to Rasulullah beyond imagination. Ya ayyuhar Rasul. He did not say, Ya Rasuli, oh, my messenger. Ya Nabiyyi, oh, my prophet. He said, Ya ayyuhar Rasul, oh, messenger. See, Allah is honoring his Rasul beyond any Standard, subhanAllah, يعني Allah Azza wa does not need anyone. If Allah tell him, Ya Muhammad, it would be a great honor that Allah saying his name. Yes? يعني Allah saying the name of someone, it's a big honor, Allah said the name. But here Allah saying with his title. That's why whenever we hear the name of our Rasul, we say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we honor. Him. said, لا يحزن كالذين يسارعون في الكفر من الذين قالوا أمنا بأفواههم ولم تؤمن قلوبهم الإمام أحمد and الإمام أبو داود in their books of hadith narrated that hadith of Abdullah ibn Abbas he said Allah عز وجل revealed this آية about two groups of the Yahud the Jews in Medina one of them before رسول الله goes to Medina one of them defeated the other group. So there are two tribes of the Jews. They were fighting with each other. And one of them defeated the other one. Uh, so one of them were more honorable than the other. You know, Jahiliya, like your tribe is lesser than my tribe, you know, because of such and such. And such. So, um, they tried to mediate and 
stop the the killing so they said the honorable tribe whoever is killed from the, by the other tribe they give them like 50 loads of 50 camel loads of dates or something like that as blood money but the other way around 100 only I mean uh, five, uh, uh, 50 and the other one uh, give 100 yani if the lower one killed a guy from the honorable tribe they give they give uh, 100 loads but if the honorable one killed someone they give 50 only yani our man is equal to of yours that's the meaning you know so um, they kept like this until Rasulullah sallallahu went to Medina then when they went to Medina another fight happened so uh, the lower one killed one of the honorable they said we do the same thing send us hundred loads uh, uh, so they refused they refused uh, then they said, okay, we make Rasulullah, we make Muhammad, even though he's not from the religion, yani, right? We make him the guide among us. So they sent some people from the hypocrites to test him, test the water. So um, Rasul Sallallahu Allah tell him, لا يحزنك الذين يسارعون في الكفر من الذين قالوا أمنا بأفوهم ولم تؤمن قلوبهم don't be afraid. don't worry about those hypocrites who are coming to you they want jahiliya to be applied while you are here right because the hypocrites want to apply the rules before yeah. so Allah Azza Jal said they only say Muslim with their tongue and then Allah talked about the Jews how they do samma'una lil kathibi samma'una liqawmin akhareen they he listened to everybody lam ya'tuk they did not come to you straight they sending someone huh? they changing the book because in their Torah, whoever has killed someone has to be killed. But now they wanted the money, they want this, they want half of that, half of this Torah. Allah telling Rasulullah, don't worry about those. Don't make them make you feel sad. Because Rasulullah feels sad about this. Why are people doing this? Why are people doing that? And it's affecting him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. <coughs> and there are many other reasons, a few other reasons of the uh, uh, narration. So they come to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam whenever uh, they have some severe punishment in, the, in their book, they come to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam trying to make it easier. And when they have something easier in their book, they follow it. So they said, okay, this person and that man and that woman, they committed adultery. So you rule among them. So he said, what is it in your book? Right? They said, you know, we humiliate them and we make them go around and stuff like that. Shame, you know, shame walk. Rasulullah said, no, bring your Torah. So they bring Torah and he said, read the part where adultery is mentioned. So they cover the part <laughs> with their hand, they read around. So one of the, the scholar who became Muslim said, Ya Rasulullah, let him move his hand. It is written there. So that's why Allah said, they hide, they hide everything in their book. سماعون للكذب سماعون لقوم آخرين لم يأتوك يحرفون الكلمة من بعد مواضعه they changing the words يقولون إن أتيتم هذا فخذوا وإن لم تؤتوه فحذروا ومن يرد الله فتنته فلن تملك له من الله شيئا فلن تملك له من الله شيئا يعني دي say to each other if he gives you what you want, take it. If he doesn't give you, so let's go back to our own own uh, issues. Naam. Subhanallah, Allah Azza Jal exposed them to uh, in front of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Uh, also talked about the hypocrites. Talked about the hypocrites. So hypocrites are the ones who are not Muslim, who are not Jews 
or not anything. Okay? They are hypocrites, wishy-washy in the heart. That's why their salah is meaningless, their fasting is meaningless, their hajj is meaningless, everything. They lie, they betray the amana. So they are not clear kafir and a clear Muslim or a clear Muslim. At least clear kafir, clear disbeliever, you know that they are on the other side. Like they are saying, I am not believing in what you do. So that's very clear. Surah Al-Baqarah in the beginning, Allah said, Muttaqeen are those, kafirin are those. Very easy. But munafiqeen, oh, lots of ayat. Because these guys cannot relate to them, these guys cannot relate to them. And they are in the middle. Hiding disbelief and showing belief. So you cannot catch them. How are you going to catch them? Said, oh, I'm saying, Ashhadu Allah, 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 Ashhadu Allah, Rasulullah. What do you want to do now? That is the danger, you know, hypocrisy. And hypocrisy is the disease of our time right now. Even children are raised here to be hypocrites. After a while they said, okay dad, okay mom, you want me to be a good Muslim? Come to the masjid, go to Sunday school, go this, I'll do it. But in outside they are completely different creature. Ask your kids, they'll tell you. They'll tell you who's who. But they have another code, they cannot snitch on each other, you know. <laughs> yeah? Yep. Yeah. They are completely different people. All the time I hear, Baba, it's not what you think. It's not who you think they are. But they don't want to say more than that. And I don't know whether people can say about them also the same thing or not. So they learn how to be double-faced, how to hide something and show something else. So those, uh, Allah Azza wa Jalla said, both of them will have shame in this dunya and they will have Humiliation in the hereafter. Amkhizyum fi dunya no fi akhirat adam al azim. Says uh, they are sammaoon al kathib again. Yeah, and Allah mentioned it twice. That's emphasis. Sammaoon, not samiyoon. You know, samiyoon means they listen, but sammaoon al kathib they listening over and over again, and then they go dig you know they want to hear like somebody is curious they want to know the hidden affairs of people if they talk to you voluntarily alhamdulillah but some people they are like it's their habit <laughs> they want to know the privacy of other people they hear lies a lot some people they like to hear any news and the more news you hear the more lies you'll be hearing by the way Right? Man, man uh, kathura kalamuhu kathura ghalatuh aw laghatuh. Whoever speaks a lot, they'll make mistake a lot. And whoever listen a lot, will hear lots of false st stuff. That's why Rasulullah said it is an enough of a lie to say everything that you heard. Because you will end up lying. Because most of what you heard is not true. <laughs> Okay, and you will end up adding stuff too. That's another form of lying. Because you are not going to say verbatim, you don't have to have a tape recorder, you know. Somebody said, did you hear this story? And one hour they are narrating the story to you. Are you going to tell me that you're going to narrate everything exactly in 60 minutes like you heard it verbatim? You're going to cut off parts, add off parts, think that you heard it like that while you heard, didn't hear it like that. And then you're going to lie. So you're lying intentionally and unintentionally. And sometimes people tell you something, Wallahi, I swear. And I did that experiment with, with people and for people. Yani. So people tell you something, a lot, lot of things, or they speak fast and they relate. And your curiosity, your curiosity makes you reconstruct the story your own way. Yeah. Reconstruct it, you fill the gaps, your own understanding. So when somebody asks you, okay, tell me what did you hear? They say something completely different. That's why, that, no, that's why the crime scene, they want more witnesses. Why? Because sometimes a person seeing a crime and they start imagining things. It did not happen. But you saw too many movies that you start reconstructing. And a missing part, you put it your own. You put that part. It's not there because you saw 
too many things, this thing happening in front of you hypothetically. So when it happens, it's like, oh, there was blood on the floor. And there was no blood on the floor. You know? And then, you know, somebody said, you know, okay, did you see the crime? Yeah, I saw the guy and all that, you know, all, all of this. And then they will ask you, how many shots did you hear? They said, oh, I hear three shots. But the guy was killed with a knife. You see, when they ask you, how many shots did you hear? Already your brain put a gun, and now three shots. It's like, I'm serious, like, like these things. So that's why they use the technology and the camera, and they put people under pressure. Under pressure to see the story changes or not. What, what did he say again? Oh, I already told you. They know that they already told them, but they want to hear it again and again and again. Because truth doesn't change. Truth is truth, right? But any reconstructed things, it will fall somehow, sometime. That's why they, they keep. So, samma'una lil kathib, they hear lies a lot. Akaluna lil suht. Suht is haram money. It's called suht. You took somebody's money without right by stealing it, by deceiving, by playing around, by finding loopholes and, you know, like those kind of things. Okay? So it is called what? Suhd. Rasulullah Sallallahu said, Kullu lahmin, every flesh, nabata that grew out of suhd, fannaru awla bihi. Hellfire is the place for it. Riba is called suhd. Take riba at interest, يعني the usury. If, if somebody uh, 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 take money by deception, selling something to somebody who doesn't deserve and they cheat them in it. Like, you know, they used to the sheep, خروف يعني, the lamb. The more it weighs, the more money. Because they, they weigh it standing. You know, in, uh, in Masr, well, here was, they weigh it standing. So you bite meat, or do you bite standing? They ask him. Bite meat means it has to be slaughtered, and that's why they extra money per pound. Because it's slaughtered and cut and all that, extra money. But if you bite standing like this, you're going to lose a lot. You're going to lose the wool, the legs, the stomach, everything. So it's, that's why it's cheap. So what they used to do, like the night before it is going to the market, they give it lots of salt water drink salt water so that the poor thing keep drinking because water is salty put salt in the water keep drinking for 24 hours until it becomes like so they go there they have few pounds more more money and a suhd that's haram money deceiving right somebody selling a car knowing that it has a problem if he tells the person the problem they're going to give a couple of thousand dollars less. So they hide the problem. Or they cover it somehow. At the suhd. Taking somebody money, suhd. People call, make scams and all that. Suhd. Money, suhd. فَهُمَّ They used to sweet talk people. And oh, this merchandise is the top of the class. Da, 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 all that. They buy it. And even here they develop devil way. Iblis, I don't think Iblis knew these things. I'm telling you, I think Iblis is sitting in the classroom for these people, Allah, to teach him stuff. And now they know that their merchandise has nothing. Nothing. They tell you, oh, you take this pill, it's going to make you happy. You take this pill, it's going to lose lots of weight. And try it for one month. Try it for one month. If it doesn't work, give us the... And we give you the money, no question asked. Isn't that a good deal? Isn't it a good deal? Is that a good deal? You pay $30, you get $30. And you try it. No harm done. No, there is harm done. You paid them the money, they took the money in advance. The money stayed them for a month. Stayed with them for a month. They work it out. Interest. Now, how many thousands or hundreds of thousands of people went to the same scam? Correct? Mm -hmm. Then you return it and the money will come after two months. <laughs> yeah? yeah? So, suht or not suht, this one? 
So basically, what they did is like they are borrowing the money from you and giving you something cheap. Does not even cost them five cents. Because they did 100,000. 100,000 people pay 30, so millions of dollars. Three months, millions of dollars. You buy this, you do this, you do that. And then you sell and you make lots of money from all the people who buy the hope of losing a few pounds. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Subhanallah, had a suhd. I'm just giving you different formats to relate what happened in our life. Suhd is not only this or that. La, it can take many different forms and shapes. To take the money without haqq. It's not your money. You deceive someone, you trick someone, you play on somebody's emotion, you play somebody's insecurity. Insecurity people play. You know, in this world, the human became a slave and became a product. This is a product. This is a product. This camera is a product. Used to be like that. Now we are the product. We are the product. The guy who makes the cameras, make sure that he sell this product to the guy who make the tripod. And the guy who make the tripod to the guy who make the batteries. And the guy make the... And we are going around. They're using you, squeezing you left and right. Agriculture, they start with your food. They're playing with it. Hormones, genetics. This is organic. La, this is not organic. La, 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 la. And you pay money. Money. Oh, this tomato is cheap. Let me get 10 pounds instead of two. <laughs> yeah. Take your money. Then we get sick. Because food is not good. That we paid for. Subhanallah al -Azim. Then you go to the medical industry. And instead of telling you, yeah, you go rest, drink some uh, good, nice chicken soup. No, they will write you this medication. And Taban insurance is going to wait for you in the next room, you know. <laughs> yeah, we're going to rip you apart. Are you done? Not yet. Pharmaceutical, I will take you. You know, this is the generic. This is not the generic. This is the this and this is that. You done with all of this? No, you're not done yet. You go to the wellness industry. Health and wellness. Oh, you want darker skin? Ten? Have that cream. Well, another ten sister, she wants to be whiter. Have whiting cream. And the company does the same exact thing. This is for the half who wants to be whiter, and this is for the half who wants to be darker. <laughs> And they make money out of both. You're going to be prettier. And you're going to be prettier. Wallah ajeeb yani. The white one become darker and the darker one become white. <laughs> so now we still have one white and one dark. <laughs> well, yani, shaitan, I'm telling you, Iblis sits in the classroom. <laughs> These things are not Iblisi way. These things are human shaitan way. Now, and empower the sisters. Empower the women. And who's empowering a woman? A man. Best designers are men. Best chefs are men. And they make the woman like a doll. يعني. Dress her up. لا, take off the clothes. لا, put off the clothes. This year's fashion, no clothes. Next year's fashion, some clothes. This year's fashion, longer. Next year, shorter. And mashallah, she's following like a doll. يعني, like a pup, muppet. يعني two years ago, the skirt were short. What make it long? يعني? What is the fashion? يعني إيه fashion? What is the fashion in it? Who oh, the guy decided this? And the guy you are fighting against? Oh, yes. And I'm just telling you, we are living in that world. Why, why all of this? Why? Because we lost our compass. We lost Allah Azza wa Jal. Believe in Allah Azza wa Jal. Then everybody is going to play around with you like this. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that. May he be miserable, the slave of the dinar. You enslaved to the gold. May he be miserable, the slave of the dirham, silver. May he be miserable, the slave of the clothing. He said, Ta'isa Abdul Qatifa. Al Qatifa was the very expensive clothes at that time. So now the fashion, we can say the fashion. He said, miserable be he or she, the one become enslaved to this. Where is 
I look good in this, so alhamdulillah. Where is that? You know, when we had that, everybody looked good. Sahih. Alhamdulillah, this taub, it, it looks good on me. My brother tried, it does not look good at him. So he's his own identity. And everybody was happy. But now it's, it's the fashion. It looks ugly, but they fashion. But it's out of fashion. Huh? Oh yes, it, it's out of fashion. Then you go buy it cheaper from the store. It was very expensive, 10 times more last year. This year, mashallah, became like, wallah, and I always wait until the things go out of fashion. <laughs> I always buy it cheaper. Yani. What is out of fashion? What, what is out of fashion? And I talk, some people think I'm crazy. Yani. What is out of fashion? Yani those, this bag or this phone or something that you paid lots of money in it, if I don't need it, it is worthless for me. It does not mean anything. You give it to me for free, I don't want it. And you give me a thousand dollar item that I don't need it. What is it for me? I'll go give it gifts to somebody else. Fa, the idea here, suht, suht is taking something which is not your right. And all this starts by being enslaved to money. Because everybody wants money. But instead, we want the happiness of people. We don't want to cheat others. Subhanallah, Jarir ibn Abdullah. He said, I give bay'ah, pledge to Rasulullah, that I, I give good advice to every Muslim. That's easy, right? But the, guess what? He went one time to buy an Arabian horse. I told you that story before. And the guy told him 1,000 uh, dinar. He told him, how about 2,000? He told him, huh? I'm telling you 1,000, he told him, okay, give me. He said, how about 4,000? Man, what's wrong with you? He said, I'm asking you what about 4,000? Would you sell it for 4,000? He told him, yes, I'll, I'll, I'll take 4,000. And the man now started being like, he told him, how about 8,000? He said, give me the money. So he took the money and said, he ran away. So the horse. He got scared, maybe this guy's playing a trick with me or something. <laughs> then people told him, he said, wallahi, if he asks me for tripling this few more times, he does not know the value of what he has. That horse is worth way more than that. But he rushed. He said he rushed. <laughs> if he waited with me, I would have given him a few times more than that. Because he does not know the value of it. Because he gave bay'ah to Rasulullah that I will be a good advisor for every, every Muslim. And this guy needed the good advisor. Doesn't matter I am buying or not. He went further. Yani. He said it was not a must on him, but just telling you how people stick to, to that. When we have these principles, our community is safe. Now, subhanallah al -Azim, Somebody becomes uh, praised for doing their job. How many times you say to somebody, good job? It's a job done good, yes? yes. Aren't they supposed to do every job good? Yes. But you say, oh, good job, even to kids. <laughs> like, you know, go throw this in the trash. I tell my young son, he throws it in the trash and he comes do like this. He wants me to appreciate him. Okay, because he's a child, and I understand that. That's how we teach. But older ones, they won't be appreciated for their job. Oh, I done my homework. Oh, I'm so proud of you. Why? So proud of wh why? I'm so proud of you that y you stayed clean. So proud of you that you took a shower. Ya salam, mashallah. It's like, yani ajeeb when we do these things, like, what is that? Oh, mashallah, great job. You finished your food. What? You're <laughs> supposed to eat like it. That's why the kids say, oh, I don't want to eat. Okay, don't eat. Then they become hungry after half hour. They will eat whatever you give them. What I'm trying to say is, people start being appreciated for the things that it is a must. They're supposed to pray five times a day. We reward them for, that, for it. Why? Because we're going backwards. That's what Rasulullah said. The people will be praised for their deen, yani for whatever they supposed to be doing. Praised. Oh, you did Hajj? MashaAllah. Yeah, he is rich. He has money. Hajj is a duty. So after Salat al Asr, MashaAllah, good job, you prayed Asr. You do that, yani? <laughs> I'm happy you fasted Ramadan. Okay, I fast Ramadan, you know. Oh, MashaAllah, this person gives zakah every year. He's supposed to give zakah every year. 
But we started going to the duties became something like extra because more people don't. That's why Abdullah ibn Umar said, and I'll finish with that, at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu people will come to the marketplace and they are not worried from whom to buy or to whom they sell. Doesn't matter. So when a person comes, stranger, he said, which shop should I go? He said, go anywhere. Doesn't matter. Nobody's going to cheat you and you're going to get the best stuff. Anybody in the market, same way. Then they said, then a time came, this is a companion, huh? a companion. He said, then a time came that people will come to the marketplace, said, where do I should I shop? I, where should I shop? They tell him, everywhere except this one and this one. So now there is, the wrong is the exception. And he said, and a time will come that you will go there and the people will say, only buy from this one and this one. Right? Now we are in a time further that he did not predict. Be careful, man, from everyone. Don't trust anyone. We are in that time now. Aren't we? They did not predict that one. He thought that there will be some good left. <laughs> one or two. But now, he said to the market, man, in Egypt they used to say, this is a place you have to count your fingers after you leave. <laughs> you know, count your own fingers because somebody might have stolen a finger. Yani. That's how swift these people are going to eat you, you know, and chew you and spit you before you even realize. And there are people like that. So, subhanallah, may Allah save us, subhanahu wa ta'ala, give us the amana. Allah Azza is telling us, these sisters in the Quran, to warn us from being like that. So, don't take it and be. Uh, uh, say oh we are a Muslim ummah those are uh, uh, Jews Christian this no why Jews and Christian it's not because they were Jews and Christian because they are the nations ahead of us so Allah is telling us not to do otherwise more Muslims they are worse than these people and these people they were not the number they were not as big as us now okay and uh, the ones Allah talking about here in the Quran they are not they are not doing it as widespread as it is now among the Muslims so I always say that whenever, whenever I go, I said when Quran talk negatively about Jews and Christians, it's not because Judaism and Christianity. Originally, they were divine messages from Allah Azza wa originally. Forget about what exists now, but originally, it has the haqq in it. Inna arsalna, inna anzalna tawrata fiha hudan wa nur. Allah said, we reveal Tawrat has guidance and light and all of that. But people twist it and that's okay. People also twist Quran and Hadith, no problem. And people do that same thing. Everything the nations did before, a Muslim woman doing ten times. All the muharramat. يعني. Can we deny that? Okay, so it is mentioned in the Quran for a reason. That reason is because they are the nations ahead at the time of the revelation of the Quran. Allah said, they were good in that, continue. Being this and improve. They were bad in that, be careful. Okay, that's the whole idea. But do not say, oh, Quran... It says Jews this, Christian this. And if a Jewish neighbor or a Christian neighbor, do I have to violate them because of their belief or them? No. Different. There is a big difference. May Allah Azza wa make us understand more. We'll continue, inshallah, from this.